This is the story of the most dangerous computer virus the world had ever seen. A virus so powerful it caused over 15 billion in damage. It breached some of the most secure institutions on the planet. The British Parliament, the Pentagon, the CIA and even NASA. But the destruction did not end there. It infected more than 50 million computers worldwide, which is roughly 10% of all the internet connected device on Earth. This story begins with a young man named Unil de Guzman. He was a 24-year-old computer science student at AMA Computer College in Manila, Philippines. He grew up in a middle-class family during the late 1990s, a time when the internet access in Philippines was expensive and charged by the hour. He loved programming, but spending long hours online was something he simply could not afford. He believed that internet access should be free, like air or water. He was also a part of a small group called Grammarsoft, where students share code and ideas in the internet cafes. At that time, making a computer virus was often seen as a prank, not a serious crime. One day, while sitting in his room, he had a dangerous thought. What if I could create a program that could steal a password for a dial-up internet account? At that time, two famous computer viruses were already making headlines. CIH a virus that could completely erase the hard drive. Melissa, a virus that spread rapidly through email but did not destroy the file. He studied both of these viruses carefully and with a few modifications plus some social engineering tricks to convince people to open the infected file, he came up with this bold idea to combine the worst parts of both. That idea gave birth to one of the most destructive computer viruses the world had ever seen. The I love you virus. And once it was ready, it was time to test it. De Guzman did not want to send the virus to his family. Instead, he chose someone he knew from a chat room, a contact in Singapore. To him, it seemed harmless, just a simple test. On May 4, 2000, that person in Singapore received an email. The subject said, I love you. The message said, kindly check the attached love letter coming from me. Attached to the email was a file named loveletter4u.text.vbs. Because Windows hide file extension by default, it appeared to be just a harmless text file. The moment the file was opened, the virus activated. It instantly emailed copies of itself to everyone in the victim's Microsoft Outlook address book. At the same time, it began deleting files on his computer. To truly understand what happened next, we need to take a closer look at how the I Love You virus actually worked. The I Love You virus was more than just an email attachment. It was a worm, written in the VBA script, a simple programming language built into a Microsoft Windows. It was only 10.31 kilobytes in size tiny enough to spread quickly and simple enough for others to modify. Once open, the worm immediately went to work. First, it copied itself deep into the system, hiding under names like mskernel32.vbs and win32del.vbs. It even altered the computer settings so that every time the machine restarted, the virus could come back to life. Then, it began to spread. Using Microsoft Outlook, it gathered the email addresses and sent itself to every single contact in the victim's list. Each email carried the same subject line, I love you, and the same love letter message. To avoid suspicion, it made sure not to send multiple copies to the same person. But the damage did not stop there. The virus searched for pictures, music, scripts, and basically anything on the computer, and it destroyed them and overwrite them with its own code. And all while this was happening, it tried to download another program called winbugspix.exe from the malicious website. This file's job was even more sinister. It collected dial-up internet passwords and sent them back to Unil de Guzman. Because Windows hide file extension by default, victims never saw the .vbs at the end of the file name. To them, it looked like nothing more than just a harmless text document. Soon after the first outbreak, hackers around the world began creating their own version. More than 25 variants of the I Love You Worm appeared. 
each one slightly different but just as destructive. Compared to Melissa, which caused around 80 million in damage, the I Love You virus caused billions. The main reason was it destroyed the files. Its code uses simple loops to go through all the drives, find the target file, overwrite them and delete the original one. Later version even infected the .exe files, making the computers completely unusable. In the years since, security experts have called the I Love You virus as Patient Zero for email-based phishing attacks. For example, the US Army reported that it infected more than 2,000 of their computers and required over 12,000 hours to clean this up. The I Love You virus first appeared on May 2000. It was sent from Manila earlier that day, but the first major outbreak was reported in Hong Kong. From there, it spread like a wildfire. Within just a few hours, company networks across Asia were crippled. By midday in Europe, the virus had reached to London, where it became so disruptive that the British Parliament was forced to shut down its entire email system. By morning in the United States, the damage was staggering. The virus had breached the Pentagon, the CIA and even NASA, where some files were permanently lost. In less than 10 days, the numbers were almost unimaginable. Between 45 and 50 million computers were infected. That was nearly 10% of every internet-connected computer on Earth at that time. The I Love You worm spread 15 times faster than Melissa virus, which had been considered one of the worst just a years earlier. The countries hit the hardest were the United States, the United Kingdom, and much of the Europe. In the US alone, more than 12 million infected emails were sent, and nearly 3 million people opened the attachment. The Pentagon and CIA shut down their system, while the Veterans Health Administration was left to process over 7 million emails, causing a massive delay. In Britain, Parliament could not use emails for hours, in Europe, banks reported payment delays, and across the world, companies like Ford, AT&T, CNN, and even Microsoft were forced to halt communication as they tried to stop the infection. The financial toll was crashing. Cleanup and loss productivity cost between 5.5 and 15 billion dollars. Yeah, you heard that right, 15 billion with the B. To give you just one example, the US Army sent over $79,000 cleaning more than 2,000 infected computers. Ordinary people also suffered, losing precious personal files, photos, music, and important documents, all totally wiped away. The virus revealed a huge gap in cybercrime laws. In the Philippines, where it was created, there were no laws against hacking in 2000, so Unid the Guzman could not be prosecuted. This led to the E-Commerce Act being passed later that year. According to the Guzman, the virus was only supposed to target local Manila networks, but he removed the location limit out of curiosity, and that change made it spread worldwide. For years, he stayed out of the public eye, working at a phone repair stall. In 2020, he finally admitted that he was the one who made the I Love You virus. And he said, I did not expect it would go to the United States and Europe. I was surprised. Although the Guzman acted alone, the investigation at first focused on more people. His sister boyfriend, Ronil Ranaz, was suspected because the virus was traced to their shared apartment phone line. He did not know programming and was later cleared. Another classmate, Michael Bion, was also suspected because his name appeared on some disk found by the police. But the Guzman later said Bion wasn't involved. The I Love You virus showed how powerful social engineering can be, tricking people using emotion. In this case, the love letter subject made people curious enough to open it without thinking. 